and at this point in time I can go into edit mode okay so I'm going to click edit mode this is just telling me I've got over overlapping objects and that's okay I'm just going to click OK for that and accept it not a problem okay so the next really important piece is for us to get the actual backing track into our patch and right now I'm at the patch level um, and so the way to think about this is like this patch is associated with um, a song for which you've got uh, the right settings and whether it be keyboard or guitar amp doesn't really matter but um, to uh, to have all, all those set up and then have the backing track within that so uh, to get a backing track in mainstage uses the playback plugin so that plugin has to exist within a channel strip and the channel strip um, is a software instrument channel strip and there's a couple of different ways to get that uh, backing track or playback channel strip in uh, I'll show you the uh, the easy or my preferred way first and that is you simply go into finder just open up a finder window here and on my desktop I already moved a few sample backing tracks in that you can see right here and all I'm going to do is uh, is I'm going to click on one of these backing tracks just resize this window a little bit and let me take this uh, Pink Floyd time backing track simply going to click on it and then all I do is I drag this from my finder over to my channel strip here and as you can see as I do that this green plus sign came up I still get hold of the, uh, the mouse uh, click button and, and I'm going to release it and as soon as I release it uh, main stage will add in uh, a channel strip to support the playback and if you take a look right here you'll see that it created a playback channel strip with the playback plugin within it and it uh, named the channel strip to support the name of my uh, backing track okay now the other way that you can do this is and let me close this finder window here is you can manually add in a software instrument channel strip yourself and the way that you do that is uh, in the upper right hand corner here you see the little gear just click down on that it'll bring up a menu you can say add software uh, instrument channel strip which I just did and that will add in a channel strip now you then have to tell it that you want the playback plugin it defaults to the EVP 88 and if I just click on that I wonder if I can zoom in on this for you so you can see it a little clearer okay so I'll click on EVP 88 it'll bring up another menu and right down here right after the good old Kluffgeist or the metronome there is this playback option right here okay so I've chosen playback and let me create stereo so as soon as you do that then it will open up the playback plugin which is right here now the next important step is you need to then load your backing track file into this playback plugin now again we didn't do the, the find or drag drop thing we're doing this kind of manually and the way that you would do that is to click on the file right here and it'll bring up a, a finder window and then again I'd click on my desktop and I would select the backing track file that I want select the backing track click open and it brings the, the backing track in right here now one other important thing just to just to know that trips up a few people is um, I would go into this uh, little gear menu right here click on that and check off start with play action it defaults to flex mode slicer I don't know why it defaults to that but um, change that to start with play action because that way you can then use the space bar in the edit mode to actually start the uh, backing track so let's zoom out of there a little bit and uh, 
close that. Okay, now I'm, I don't need that. Uh, I just created that channel strip just so you could see how you have to do it manually. Uh, so because of that, I'm just going to delete that channel strip. And we're left with the one that we wanted. Okay, so now that we have the, the playback plugin within my channel strip, I have the backing track that I want right here. And even on this one too, I'm going to drag down here, starts with play action. And that's all good. And if I press the transport button, or the play button within, within the transport, and this is just like a big tape machine or a virtual tape machine really, is if I press play, you'll see that uh, the track is actually starting to play. So, but let's just close this for now because we don't need it at the moment. And I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, so now what we need to do is start doing some mapping. And the first place that I'm going to go is my waveform. And I'll click on the waveform itself. I'll zoom this in a little bit too. And as soon as I do that, you can see in the screen control inspector just down at the bottom half of the screen here, it brings up my uh, backing track name. I'm just going to click on that. It's within my playback function. I'm going to click on that. And if you looked at that, uh, or if you look at it closely, you'll see now that it's populated uh, the little uh, waveform control section here uh, with the waveform of the backing track. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. It's added it in. Now the other pieces that I want to do, as we talked about a little bit earlier on, is to use these indicators here just to give me an idea of where we're at. And the first one is, um, let's do the position one, it's a little easier. So uh, I'll just click on it, zoom in a little bit, and go down here and I'll select my uh, Pink Floyd backing track that then tells me this is all unmapped. I'll then click on the playback um, option itself and I'll click status and under status there are a whole bunch of of things that you can assign. Okay, but what I want to do is assign the position. So I'll click position. And that is now uh, mapped. Now for the remaining, I'll click on that. Move over a little bit. Again, select my backing track, playback, status, and uh, I'm going to choose time to end. In other words, how much time do I have uh, left? And that's simply going to uh, count down. And that has been mapped as well. So we've really got two functions mapped here. One is the position, uh, which is right here, and the remaining is right there. Okay. We're good. Alright, so let me zoom back out here. And the other pieces that we want to map are the transport components.